Today we're going to talk about Astro Analytic Learning Series and using the Naive Bayes classifier. So Naive Bayes is part of Astro's text analytics genre of analytics. Um, it is a basic text classification technique uh, or a machine learning technique. It basically takes a training set, data set and used to generate a model. The model is then used to predict the outcome of future observations based on other input values and variables. Use cases include text and document classification, spam filtering, churn prediction, and medical diagnosis prediction. Fun fact is Naive Bayes Classifier is CPU and memory efficient, meaning that it doesn't require a lot of heavy equipment to do with a lot of uh, to do to, to work with it. Basically, you don't require a lot of training data either. So as a result, the training time with Naive Bayes is significantly reduced as opposed to other methods. The other thing I love about it is it's part of our machine learning capabilities that comes available inside of Aster. So let's go ahead and get going here. So a little bit about Naive Bayes into a deeper dive. So imagine we have this diagram here of X's and O's and we, want to, we have a new observation N and we want to determine if N is an O or an X. So if we look here, we have 30 O types, so there are 30 of these, and then we have 15 X types. So the O-type probability is 30 divided by the total count of objects, so 45. So that represents about 66%. Uh, the X-type probability is 15. We have 15 X's and out of the 45 total, and so that's about 33% of the time. So we introduce N, and we look as a new observation here. And really what we do is, is we look at its nearest neighbors. So we can say N is an O, is it's two-thirds, or 66%, times 3 out of 30, so there's there's uh, three near neighbors here to n um, equals 0 0.06. And then n is an x as one third, so it's x is one third of the observations times one out of 15. So x only has one observation relationship as a nearest neighbor to n. So it'd be 0 0.2. So we can say from a pos uh, posterior probability that probably n is an O. That's a neat thing to do. So um, step one of using the, and this is how it's done in Aster, step one is we have a training model, naive base text, and we take in the training documents, and then we generate a model. And then we finally put the, the model into naive base text predict, along with new sets of observations or documents, and then we get the classified or the predicted set. So this is phase two. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So using NPATH to generate training data sets. So this is our process that we use. We use uh, Naive Bayes quite a bit for our predictive analytic for churn. So we're going to go through that today um, through a use case that's related to churn. So the raw data sources, of course, would be things from, it could be multiple channels, it could be a single channel. Today, I think we're using a web channel, um, but it could be, you know, your call centers, it could be um, emails, it could be uh, brick and mortar store transactions, it could be your web clickstream data. We generate the end path to develop the training set, and this is a path to churn or non-churn. And this is the actual end path query that we would use um, to generate those paths and patterns. So we look at things that end up as a uh, account closed or not closed. Um, and then we train the model using that training set that we generate from the end path, and we get the model, the model generated here. And then we take new sets of observations that are different from these observations up here that are not classified. And you'll see what the, uh, the actual uh, training data set looks like here in a second. And we put that into the naive base text predict algorithm and we get a predicted set of results or documents as a result of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So here's what our training data set looks like. And in, right here we have a table called churn NB training with columns customer identifier, customer type list, and churned. And the customer identifier is just a unique customer ID. And the interaction type list is just client paths or journey path to churn or non-churn. Um, and then we have a churned, uh, almost like a yes or no, but it's really just no churn or churn as this type. So um, this is what it looks like. This is what the data looks like. So this is a unique customer ID. This is the path. And you'll notice that this is account closed. And this is a churn event. And the non-account closed would be no churn. Um, train the model. The naive base text breaks the training text into tokens. So it's going to break these things into tokens and it will take account of the value of those tokens as it relates to the churned events. And we'll get into that and how that works here in a second. So how we train the model. So this is the actual SQL map reduce statements that you would use to train your naive base model for doing, um, uh, you know, predictive uh, churn 
processing here. So we do a create table statement. As you see right here, we're going to create a table called churn model and distribute by token. And then we're going to do a select and we'll select these fields here and from naive base text. So this is again, it's select star from our analytic operator. In this case, it's naive base text on churn and be training, which is our input table that we just described. And um, the text column is interaction type list, which is in our data source interaction type list. Um, the category column is churned, so this is the, 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 the classification of those training set, that training set that we have in our training uh, data set. And the, these categories are churn and no churn, which if you remember from our uh, previous slide, these are the actual uh, classifications of churn and no churn that exist in our data as it relates to this uh, category column here. So the delimiter, we're actually going to look for um, the delimiters of comma. So if you look at our data source, remember it had commas in between the different uh, uh, click events or page events that were inside of our path to churn. And then we're gonna remove punctuation that isn't necessary. And this is basically what the model looks like. So we get the actual token or the word and its relationship to the count of the words that are inside of the, uh, that are inside the training data set. And this is the model. Now, the next phase of this is that we're gonna actually export this model into a CSV file and then we're gonna install this file into Aster. To do that, it's a three-step process. So we're going to use, we're going to go out into a putty session, we're going to log into the queen, and we're going to use uh, ncluster export to build the CSV file from the model table we generated in the previous step. So we go ncluster underscore export dash u uppercase db super user dash w db super user dash d beehive dash dash csv telling it's a comma separated values um, file. This is the name of the, the, the table that we're going to export, and we're going to export the churn underscore model CSV for, file. Um, once we've done that, we're going to do step two, and this is log into ACT, and we're going to log into ACT-U, and this is again through PuTTY. You can actually go from this step right into this step. If you look down here, I've actually coordinated step one to this. You can actually see how it actually works. Step two is down here, and step three is right here. Um, so we're going to log into ACT using this command right here um, into Beehive and install the file into Aster using the install command churn model.csv which was generated from right here. So whack install churn model CSV is it. So that's it. And uh, so the good news is, is that in 6.20, 6.20 release of Aster, this step won't be required. We'll be able to use this uh, churn model table instead and that's planned for release. Um, so let's test, let's do, let's look at the test data input review. And basically what this is, is this is the unclassified events. So if you look down here, these are people who have not churned or maybe on a path to churn or have churned that are not a part of the original um, training data set. So what we're going to do is it'll be two columns. The churn NB input will be the customer identifier, which is the same. It looks very similar to the original training data set and uh, interaction type list, which is going to be the client's path or journey path um, as, 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 it, as it sits today. That is, this, this set of data is going to look very similar, but it's not the same data that was in the original training data set. So to do the, the next part is we're actually going to do the actual churn prediction. We're going to implement the model in Naive Bayes. Now to do that, we're going to create a table called public.churnNBPredict, distribute by hash doc ID as select star from Naive Bayes text predict, on churn nb input. So churn nb input is here, that's from the previous slide. The document ID is customer identifier, so this is really, the document ID is really just the primary key or the customer ID here in this case of that, uh, of that uh, input data set. Text column is interaction type list, which is right here. And just like the categories, these categories are churn or no churn. This is really related to the model file. Um, so we're gonna look for, we're gonna predict whether or not the people that are in this churn NB input file are going to uh, are going to churn or not churn, and then we're going to use the churn model.csv file that was implemented in uh, the previous steps here. So once we do that, we actually get the actual churn prediction. So we create a table called churn NB predict, and we limit by 100. And we can see the doc ID, and this is just the customer identifier, the fact that they churned or the prediction that they churned or not churned and then the logic churn and the logic no churn. And what this is, is just basically an interpretation of the measure of how well the parameter values fit the training example or the training data set. And that's pretty much how all this works. 
Um, let's go ahead and jump out and prove to you that I actually did this. Um, if you look here, this is our actual um, end path statement that we use to generate this list right here. So I went ahead and I, I, uh, I uh, ran a select star from NB training and I get a list here that shows the customer ID and the path to churn or non-churn and then the classification. This is our training data set, remember. And then we're gonna implement the model and we're gonna create this table right here. And um, that basically takes us to this particular area right here where we have the tokens and the churn and the no churn and the counts of the tokens as it related to the, um, the in, inside of the training set. So now we export that out, do the, you know, the end, end cluster export and we go in and we, um, you know, log into ACT and then we, we install that file and we come in here and this is our actual test cases. These are the, this, these are the people that we have not, uh, we, we want to test to see if they are on the path to churn or no churn. So that's the query there. And, um, you know, and this is the actual statement that we use to actually predict the churn. And here we go. This is the actual customer ID, the fact whether or not they churned or not, and then the logic churn and the, no, the logic, uh, log logic no churn value and results. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you have a happy, happy day. Take care.